Hello everybody, this is Zigzag Zog coming to you from somewhere in this world. We're back to continue our playthrough of Total War Attila featuring Medieval Kingdoms and that 1212 AD mod. And uh, we're ready to focus on the rest of the Iberian Peninsula now. Now that we've conquered uh, Portugal, or at least mostly conquered Portugal, we still got their, their homeless over here out to sea uh, lingering. So I may have to keep a force back just so they don't... Uh, come back and try taking over a city on us and cause some problems. Um, otherwise, we have all our armies pretty well ready to go. Even in Evora, I can probably temporarily move them out, maybe get a governor down here, um, and then public order. So we'll have a couple armies that will be able to move up here to Badajoz. I'm not actually sure of the pronunciation on that city. There you go. And uh, Braga over here uh, will be able to take on Lyon. And then, of course, we'll declare war here on the Kingdom of Navarre here shortly with this army here. And uh, then we'll have to worry about what these guys do. We have a small force with some ar a few units being recruited here to hopefully hold here if they decide to move up towards Montpellier. And that's kind of where we're sitting down here. So uh, before we get to the next turn and kind of get things moving forward to make that happen, uh, I want to take a look up here at the king. And it was so graciously pointed out to me that he's kind of been sitting here. And uh, I have to admit, I, I kind of forgot about him one turn, but I think he's been sitting here for two turns. And uh, the second time I let him sit here is because we had a declaration of war. Um, what is it? The Duchy of Greater Poland over here somewhere right about here. Yeah, Duchy of Greater Poland is at war with us, and I've kind of been keeping my eyes open between turns to see if we could see anybody traveling up here to come around the Danish peninsula. Who knows uh, if they have uh, the ability to land here and cross land. I, maybe I wouldn't see anything because uh, they do have a trade agreement over there, so I wouldn't put it past them. So I think I've kind of made up my mind with that long little talk there is I'm going to keep our air back here on the home front just in case because we have that new declaration of war that kind of surprised us a little bit. Um, we're going to park a little bit centralized, I think, at least to start. Do we have any archers? So actually, what I think we're going to do is try getting ourselves back to London here. We'll move to Colchester first. Ships to port. And uh, let's just see what we can recruit here. I can't recall what's available. Okay, we do have longbowmen here. So I think what we'll do, because I do want to add on a few more longbowmen, we don't have a lot of funds to be able to do that. Um, as a matter of fact, let's just add a couple now. Or we actually we can add one more now. Why don't we? We didn't have enough to really address our building situation and buildings that we want both down in Portugal to help with public order and up here. Um, one thing to pay attention to that I don't know if we pointed out, we used to be up to respectable power, but we've slipped back down to balanced power. And in a way that's very good. Public order had been taking a negative one hit and now we don't have that negative one hit. So there's really hardly any territories that are trending down anymore there's only like uh, three or four one two three yeah i only see three trending down and i think it's up in this row right here nottingham uh and they're still at 71 we have uh over here in wales they're negative one still at 76 public order and dublin over here that's our little row of public order issues and they're down the lowest in dublin so we're gonna have to maybe look at getting enough funds so we can build uh, maybe a city square to build up from that to help with public order a little bit. In fact, just doing the city square itself, we'd need almost 3,000 to build it. So uh, that's that's in on the wish list. There's quite a few things on the wish list right now. Uh, and, and speaking of wish list, what I'm going to do before we get to the next turn also is we're going to assign uh, a few of our remaining tutors out there. We're going to see if we can get wives for those uh, individuals in our family that don't have wives and have enough influence to do it. And uh, just assign any household members 
that we can uh, because if we aren't signing household members we're kind of wasting perks that we could be getting by having them so we're let's start with um, let's see if I can find William I had him earmarked as somebody here we go yeah there's no household here uh, so let's give him a learned tutor right here uh, we also have uh, Adam that's uh, along over here somewhere I think in fact there's Adam right here and uh, he right now has a bodyguard and I don't feel he needs that bodyguard anymore so let's help our research rate and get the tutors assigned and speed up some of our research and finally um, I've identified Mark also as maybe being available if I can track down Mark there's so many different names and here's Mark what do you know he's a statesman and he has an opening we're gonna give him the final uh, alchemist to help research rate for civil developments at least and then as far as marriage goes we're gonna take a few that have the ability off of retainerships in fact do you have yeah you have the ability so let's get you off of retainership and we got it looks like it takes a turn then before I can come back and uh, check for wives And we'll kind of just scroll along. Randolph, that's our heir. He actually can afford to go searching for a wife. We're going to do that right now. Um, you have a wife, so we don't have to take you off your retainership. You do not, and you have enough influence down here to search for a wife. So we're going to take you off so you can search for a wife next turn. And anybody else who has it, there we go. Ralph. William, can you? Not quite. So we're close on a few, and, and Stephen isn't quite of age. He will be very soon. So we're going to go on the grand wife hunt this turn and next turn uh, to see if we can fill out the family and uh, get things focused that way. Alfred, no, you're too new. A lot of, not, a lot of newbies out there. And then finally, we're going to take a look at Eric over here um, as far as our general and see what kind of help we can give him uh, Eric where are you commanding right now well it doesn't really matter what I'm gonna do is give you the sparring partner to help with the attack and defense for the commander's unit to help you out and speaking of which we're gonna help the spear infantry units in your army also by giving you that one and there we go that should be enough uh, as far as households for the moment and what we're going to do now, we don't have any more money to spend. We're pretty well set as we are. We're going to go head on to the next turn, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, that was a pretty clean turn. No pop-ups at all. And let's see what has been going on here. We got an illegitimate child from Alan. Another illegitimate son via Eric. And another illegitimate son via Paul. So the illegitimacy reigns. It was the season to play around, wasn't it now? Uh, let's see, Randolph, our heir, has found a wife, and uh, I like that. Chance of having children plus 20%. Amazing pickup for the heir, especially. So we're going to take her hand, not let her get away. Ralph also looks like you found, although... <laughs> You're protective. How does, let's see, hostile agent success is goes up, but the agent self-defense, 10% of wounding said agent, though, has gone up also because she's protective. So that's kind of weird the way those percentages work out, but uh, I don't think that's anything to worry about. We're going to go ahead and take her hand famous last words uh, our population surpluses continue so we're in great shape there and uh, we have some rating of our ocean areas from the kingdom of Poland so that's some our uh, Portugal <laughs> I'm worried about Poland a great duchy of greater Poland and so I got Poland on my mind so it is Portugal down here that's rating out here so let's try this I know we, naval battles are not a thing but I think if I move my king and his army out here as a fleet to drive him off that should help For God himself. 
drive him out to the, uh, the high seas and we'll see if we can get some uh, further attrition. I won't be able to remember all these numbers to see if we're getting attrition every time I take a look, but I have to assume Ready we will orders. be. Docking. And we lost. We just assigned a learned tutor, and uh, we just lost a learned a tutor. So Lisbon has uh, the shipyard demolished. Let's see what that looks like over here. Got us down to a jetty. It gives us a little food, and that's about it, which is fine. Um, and we do have a tiny bit of funds. Um, not really a lot. we got to worry about sanitation down here. How bad is it? Negative two. And I have no real sanitation buildings down in this area right now. And our food is negative 40, so our food is definitely negative. And I don't have the funds to upgrade to a fishing port or anything like that, so I think we're just going to hang on for the moment. Is there anything adding to... Nothing else is really adding to our squalor. We do have a large city transferring that hopefully will help sanitation a bit when it converts. Uh, let's hope that'll take care of it. So I'm not going to spend any funds there. We also have sanitation issues up here. And uh, what we're going to do, can we convert the plaza? Because that may then allow us to build the sanitation building we need. And we don't have the funds. We're just a couple hundred shy uh, of being able to convert there. Uh, so we're going to have to live with the sanitation. So what I'm going to do, at least here, uh, we're going to move the army over here. We hunger for battle. And we're just going to kind of fortify and sit on the border. Get the stakes up. Keep our integrity up. In fact, I think that's what we're going to do with the king's army over Ready here: is take them out of the city proper, Advance. and see if we can also do fortified stance to, to maintain Ready. our integrity and get us out of the infested city. We'll kind of we get everybody positioned with where they're going to go, you get them orders. fortified, you may as well get and uh, building up integrity as best we can until we need to move Evora. Our, oh, we're okay to stay here because our integrity is okay and I want to keep maintaining public order. And public order is still increasing, although very minimally in Lisbon. So the move did not hurt us here or in Braga by moving the forces out. So we're kind of waiting uh, for the right time and I've got to figure, is now the right time I'm thinking next turn will be the right time. So let's get ourselves up to the border here, do the same thing. At your command. Get the stakes up. And we'll get everybody ready to go for next turn. What have we got here? We just finished some recruiting, and so we're looking at long bowmen, which is important for our defense here to have that available. I'm wondering if we want to add a few spearmen to man the walls just to help us out a little bit. 345, we're gonna go ahead and dip into that. It's a good life. And uh, I think we're gonna look at bolstering if I have the funds uh, for one more unit of longbowmen over here. Yeah, we're not, I still mid-turn did not see any signs of anybody coming over from Greater Poland, but you know, I kind of feel like if I leave uh, the home country abandoned, I'm just asking for us to get I'm just asking for it is what I'm thinking so let's see if we can afford one more long bone and that should help us out a little bit uh, for being on the defensive we've gained some traits looks like we have some more children coming of age wow let's go see what they look like Eustace nice zeal Eustace is also disgusting, so that kind of hurts him. <laughs> oh boy, on public order, so much for you being a, a governor. And uh, definitely not a govern governor in North Africa. And we got Stephen, who is good. Actually, that's a good governing prov uh, 
increasing wealth as a governor is not bad. And he would be a good governor down in North Africa should we need it down there. Respectful. Wow, that's both. Stephen has... How does that work? You have two respectful traits. That's interesting. That sounds like a glitch, doesn't it? To have the same traits. And Alan's chance of having children is uh, very good. So there we go. And ready for duty. There's uh, Martin and Eric. So they're of age. And available. We recruited our longbowmen down in Montpellier. And we gained an executioner and a military chaplain. So uh, public order if I need some help. Actually, I don't know that I need help in any area that has a governor. But it's nice to know when I do put in. Ooh, and Humphrey has integrity. So we have a military chaplain. So if uh, we'll take a quick look at our armies and see if there's anybody Come on low on the old integrity meter. And it doesn't look like anybody will be. Oh, yeah, we do have here Paul. So maybe, Paul, we take a look at you and see if you can use this guy. What do you have here now? Uh, it's more like offensive things, but let's, let's give you a boost. I'd rather have the boost, I think, to your army's integrity. So we're going to make that switch there. And then let's get over here looking at the last few things. Uh, we got some ranks gained. Humphrey, let's go find you. Over in Colchester, let's see, public order looks good. Everything looks good on that front. So we'll see if we have any income helping promotions that we can give you. That's where we'll focus. Um, we do have tax rate down here is probably where we may work. So if we do cunning, that will actually help uh, with uh, in the province maintenance cost. It'll improve our maintenance cost. Oh, you're not the one. Oh, because I don't think I clicked on Colchester. There we go. Let's get down to our governor over here. Sometimes I go where I want, but I don't actually click there. So, yeah, we already have the tax rate maxed. Uh, extra cunning will help with our maintenance costs in the governed province. So that's a cost-improving perk. I don't have to worry about replenishment. So we're going to go in case I do any construction. We're also going to uh, lower those costs. Uh, we also have Thomas down in Algiers. And actually, public order-wise, we're looking good. So we're going to look at any income possible promotions here also. And once again, we're kind of looking at the same thing. So we're going to go with cunning to help with uh, maintenance costs being reduced. And in case we do any more construction down here, we'll take on that perk also. And one more, Paul. Where are you, Paul? Over in Biskra. And Biskra's actually looking good, but let's take a look a little closer at that. Uh, part of the reason we're doing so well is the characters, and namely our priest. So we technically could use a little extra public order in case the priest dies eventually, or uh, we need him to move on somewhere else. So I think we'll focus on public order perks for this promotion in this particular instance. And uh, public order, the best way to hit that right off the bat is with authority. So we're going to do uh, both our promotions with authority. And that also then gets us in range of more public order by being an inspired leader down here. All right, so we've, we've gone through the little things we need to. Let's just make sure I have my assassins where I want them. Yeah, we're in range of these armies over here. Actually, these armies too. So I have the ability to attempt an assassination attempt should I need it. Um, I think what we'll do is maybe get this assassin over near these armies. So should they get a little active, we have some choices there. And that's really all I need to set up at that point. Um, Yeah, our, we don't have money to spend as far as upgrading public order anymore because I'm worried about the upcoming battle first. And then we'll see, hopefully, if we are successful, we'll be able to start focusing back. And I don't see any new trade opportunities. We've pretty much met everybody possible and are trading with everybody we possibly can who will trade with us. 
So uh, I think now is the time, ladies and gentlemen. I do believe now is the time. Uh, let's see. I think what we do is we got everybody moved up and set. We're going to take our next turn and then start, start investing. I think that's how we're going to do it. I guess I could do it this turn. Do I want to just get going and start the investment? Given that it's winter, I don't think these are high winter zones, although right here it is. So we're going to wait. We could take winter attrition just because of the snow on the ground here uh, because we're crossing the mountains here. So I'm going to wait next turn. So at least right away we won't take any attrition by our investment over here. So let's take our next turn. We'll see you on the other side. Oh, wait, before I do that, let's see if we can. I think we moved on, so I should have those that I took off of. And that was you, Martin, wasn't it? Yes. We're going to search for a couple more wives, and there should be one more over here who has the influence to go hunting for a wife right here. You should have been the only two retainers left. Those uh, read the rest of us that came of age won't have enough influence yet. So there we go. Now we're ready for the new turn, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, let's see what happened. The will of God. Do we have a death yet? Yeah, natural causes, Richard. So we lost ourselves a general right before we're about to go into big time battle. And we have to look for appropriate replacement. Now you have a lot of negative traits, corruption in a governed province. Well, you're, you're, you'd be a general. Governed province, bad religious influence. Well, that won't affect you as a general. And loyalty is negative one. It's at five. That's not hideous. Although I have much higher loyalty generals down lower. So let's, uh, I don't need a politician as a general. I don't need a landowner as a general. I don't need negative traits. Yeah, we got a marksman. We have Martin, who's a warrior. But those are all mid-sized public order traits. I mean, the loyalty traits. So I, I'm just going to go with Eric at this point uh, with the extra melee experience for unit recruits that he's going to be giving us. So uh, even though he has negative traits, most of these do not involve anything to do with his ability to lead. And uh, he, plus he, the good traits, at least, are all gear, geared towards uh, being a good general. So we're going to go ahead and take Eric to replace and take over in that army. And yeah, life has taken its toll at the ripe old age. <laughs> I guess back then it maybe was age of 54. Randolph, our ruler is dead and the mantle of leadership has been passed long. May he live. Uh, so our heir, who's back up in the home country, is now the general and we'll have to see who our new heir is going to be so wow richard himself bit the dust down here so that is the king's army itself and i'm wondering if that has anything to do you all didn't see this happen but uh, the portuguese army or army just sailed right in with no opposition and you know why they shouldn't it, it, there was no battle nothing that took place that popped up, he just went into the city. Is it because I'm fortified that I couldn't reinforce over here? But still, isn't there a garrison that should have popped up as uh, needing to battle him? So instead, right now, I've lost Lisbon. Uh, and we're gonna have a new general right here that's gonna have to take over Lisbon. So on top of the invasion that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing a battle for Lisbon yet again. Okay, Paul Toulouse uh, has some wavering loyalty. In fact, less. Let's go see exactly. Oh, that's we're going to have potential loyalty issues because we have a new king who may not have the uh, same kind of influence that we used to have from our former king. So I'm, I'm afraid I'm, if we're going to see a lot of these, I hope not. All right, we found a, we're finding some good wives here for our. Oh, well. As soon as I say that, right? And that's bad for authority. So I don't know if he's, I don't know if this is the right wife for you. I don't like the idea of having less authority for you, Eric. 
I think we can do better. And you still have enough influence for another try. So uh, let's do this. We got some population surpluses again. Before I do that, let's take a look at our new king. In fact, I don't know where he is over here. Oh, there, there's Randolph. Oh, so thing, things got moved around because Randolph used to be back over here. That's why things are looking a little weird and, and bizarre. But our king has has passed away and we now have a new king. And he has no children yet because we only just got him his wife. And at least now he has the chance for children. But who do we have or who, did, who got designated as the heir is what I'd like to find out. Is there a way to check by just clicking here to find out? Does it tell me who his heir is going to be? No, we're just going to have to kind of scroll around, so bear with me. All right, so I may have missed something. I did not see anybody designated it as, an, as an heir. I know I could click on anybody and uh, declare an heir. Um... But I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, since we have a high chance for a child, uh, I'm going to hold off a little bit. I, I know we are going to be in battle with our king, so it's a dangerous situation not having an heir designated right now. Um, probably is a probably is not a wise choice, but uh, that that's the choice I'm making at the moment, and we're going to count on us being able. Uh, to survive our upcoming battles. We lost our resource of stone. Uh, the province is contested. I don't know why and how that worked. I said that already. Uh, somehow in the mid-turn, he, it just, he, I just watched uh, the Portuguese uh, uh, army at sea that's decimated and still is hurting pretty bad, uh, move in and just move right in, no, no contest. And so I don't know how that happens. I, I know if I try to take over a city like I will be and there's no army in there, well, guess what? There's a garrison and I have to do battle. And none of that happened here. So, uh, and, and if it did, it auto resolved so fast with no notifications, nothing. And uh, I get that I was fortified. I wouldn't have been able to reinforce because I'm fortified. So uh, maybe something like that happened, but it just didn't seem proper. I guess so let's unfortify right here right now and we are going to uh, attack to take back the, the city and it does seem that it'll be quite in our favor and we're gonna go ahead and uh, get our ladders built Get our battering ram built, and we are going to take back Lisbon. And I guess our next big step now, uh, let's just take a look and make sure there's no other surprises. We lost a trade agreement here. We lost some more household. A page, a decorated sword. Uh, we did get our some new units recruited, some spearmen and whatnot. Uh, to help in any defenses. Let's do our ranks before we start our battle movements everywhere else. And we did gain a household cook, which helps with army integrity should I need another another boost that way. So let's do our promotions and we'll be ready to move. We hunger for battle. Over in Colchester, I could have sworn we did this one already. The governor here... Um, Oh, and that's not Colchester. You know who are who gets the promotion? It's the, that's why I'm confused. It is our king who gets the promotion. Our new king at age 22 gets a promotion, and we definitely want. Let's see, morale, commander's aura. What we really want to work on is personal influence growth, ideally. Um, adding to authority there is not a bad thing. Even more authority here. Cunning will help with maintenance costs. 
and here's all the movement bonuses that we get um, well since we are recruiting right now too we'll gain some authority here and uh, cheapen some of our recruitment costs hopefully coming up and uh, deal with the promotions that way in fact, speaking of recruiting, I think we're going to do where this will get us up to one, two, three. Let's recruit one more longbowman down here to get us up to at least four. Look, we don't want to raise forces. Ready for battle. We want to recruit it another longbowman. I still am not seeing any movement over here, but I'm still not comfortable uh, that we might not get attacked. So we're going to leave our new king covering the home front. Plus he needs to get the affairs of London in order also, right? And Ralph in London. We have public order that could use a little bit of improving. Our squalor is not amazing here. In fact, let's see, do we have any squalor fighting uh, household members that can help us out? Uh, we have public order that's definitely something i don't want to switch for a house but we have a household cat maybe down in here unfortunately we do not so uh so much for that quick squalor help that we would have got we're going to go with the wealth improvement here and uh, i think we're going to give one more shot of authority just to help with public order and get that under control all right and finally that leaves us with edward at your service. Ah, that is our priest down in Biskra. And uh, I guess there's not really any of those. Well, we can help with corruption. We can also help with the spread of religion. So let's, since we're way far away from London, let's, let's get, get an improvement on corruption and uh, spreading religion as, as a couple things that'll help us out down here. And there we go. I think it's time to take the big step everywhere else. Uh, we're battling, unfortunately, an extra battle to gain back Lisbon. We're going to come here and declare against the Kingdom of Navarre. Welcome, worthy guest. I trust you bring words that will enhance the honor of your people in our eyes. <laughs> our honor will not be enhanced in just one quick moment. We are going to declare war. Uh, we do know that he has the Crown of Aragon and the Kingdom of Castile, both in the defensive alliance. So uh, we are hoping and crossing our fingers that both will join in the, in the defense. Because if, if they don't, they are allied with some other European uh, countries over here that we would not we, we don't want to have to directly declare war on these guys if we don't have to uh, Because I don't want to risk bringing uh, Enlarging this conflict. Uh, so let's get here and declare war and see what happens uh, I'm gonna actually call County of Flanders. Uh, they're unreliable. Uh, they're asking me to join wars all the time So what the hey? Let's go call their aid and, and see if they're gonna join us And the no allies now is well the that's the crazy to have the next words the allies uh, the worst case happened is the allies did not join them and uh we're gonna have to declare war directly and risk bringing into war everybody else over here uh so let's get the move on the kingdom of navarre let's get out of our fortified position and let's get moving Besieging the settlement. Okay, it says it's against our favor, but I think that has to do with not being able to get up and over the walls yet. So let's do what it... Oh, my goodness. So we just do not have the ability to build our materials that we need uh, to get over quickly. So why don't we just build the ladders, period? We're going to just take the walls with ladders only. And uh, count on us taking the walls and being able to open the gates for our vast... Wow, we just don't have a lot of land units, but what are we, what are we going up against? Hmm. I guess what we're going to have to do is take that extra turn. 
I just don't have the sense of how strong... Well, these guys, the militia, they are militia. So there's a lot of militia here. And that's the crossbowmen. But I don't know the strength. These are probably their strongest guys. But we're going to go ahead and just do the one turn with the ladders. We're going to count on our ground forces being capable. Uh, they are going to be highly supported by the longbowmen uh, to be able to get our cavalry into the interior. Once we get the cavalry into the interior, uh, we, sh we should have this. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to continue our siege here. Laying siege to the settlement. And what I noticed uh, with some units moving around is we may have something of an issue. The, the, <laughs> the armies of the Kingdom of Navarre are way down here. So what are the odds that they're going to make a move, say, on Algiers or something right across the ocean over here? So maybe we take advantage of this brief moment here where we don't have... In other words, let's get this army to sea to come back down to Algiers temporarily uh, to see what's going to happen to these forces and what they're going to decide to do. We already have seen shenanigans from the the Kingdom of Portugal coming back and taking over their port city. Are we going to have some more roaming armies that, that, that may try to do the same to us down here? So I think we're going to move this one army that we were planning to, to advance over here to the city of which I cannot pronounce. Uh, we're going to get them marching and get them to sea. Uh, since I don't need you to help with support on this, I'm going to keep you right there just so we get the public order more in order everywhere else. We're doing okay, and we're going to keep you on the border just in case. So there's some fickle, um, <laughs> fickle allies, defensive allies. They just said, no way in heck are we joining this battle. So that's interesting. Well, we made our big moves, guys. We made our big moves. We have a little bit of funds, but I think I'm not going to spend any money then on, on upgrading units and, and adding any units right now. I'm going to hang on and uh, try to build up more funds to next turn and uh, see if we can't take care of some public order issues either in Portugal or um, up in the home country up there. So we'll see. We're going to take our next turn and then uh, do a battle. Okay, we once again made it through the, the turn phase with no pop-ups. And let's see, we got our military investment in Pamplona and Lisbon. We know about that. We got a little more population surplus going on. Uh, household lost an alchemist. So we're losing the research rate we just assigned. We're now losing as these household members leave us. And we got some more. Someone else coming of age. Sweary. So it loses, pers loses personal influence there, excuse me. Uh, plus, uh, there's good for commanding an army. Amorous, illegitimate children. And loyalty, he has foreign interests. So uh, no, not, not the best traits we're getting for our children. The, the, the family traits are diluting fast, I do believe. Uh, we got a longbowman back up in England, and we have a new rank again so let's just take care of the rank while we th while we're here dealing with it and uh who is it it's our general here is what it looks like uh, and this is young eric he does not have a lot of skills and what do we want to do we can add to cunning which will help his army maintenance upkeep costs we have authority that will help with morale for the commander's unit and if we could find some zeal, that might not be bad to, to pick up also to help with our missile units. Uh, so I think we're going to go with a little uh, authority and zeal over here. Cunning we don't need so much yet. We're going to go with this to start off. And there we go. We're ready for some battles. We're going we're gonna to be ready to once again retake Lisbon. Uh, been there, done that. And uh, then probably what we're going to do is next time we're going to work on to taking victory. over this battle. And let's just see how it's Besieging changed. The oh, it's still saying it's not in our favor. So that's 
going to be quite interesting. Probably because this is mostly a green army that does not have a lot of armor upgrades. Does this army have a lot of armor upgrades? No, not here either. I'm surprised it's saying we will not have good odds. Uh, but guess what? That's the battle that's coming up next time. We're going to maintain here. Like We're going to take back Lisbon and get things back to the way they were and drive them out of Lisbon. So uh, let's start uh, with this battle right here. To battle. Highly in our favor. And it looks like... Yeah, everybody's pretty depleted as far as uh, what they have fighting up against us. Uh, we also are getting reinforced because our other army at sea is able to reinforce. So uh, I'll probably keep them at sea, not use them because I want to head them over towards uh, North Africa and Algiers. And I don't need to have them all weakened up uh, in that process. The only time we'll use them is for some reason uh, we're not getting over the walls properly enough. But uh, we should be okay. So uh, we'll see you down on the battlefield, everybody. Okay, looks like we have good dry weather conditions, so we're going to start our deployment. Uh, we do have uh, reinforcements at sea if we need them. Let's see, where have we... Uh, we bring brought down the towers over here, so it looks like we're going to be doing a frontal assault uh, over on this side. Um, let's see if we can get a peek or an idea of where... And is the gate worn down at all? Yeah, the gate is about half damage. And as far as barricade options that we're seeing for them. Well, this way brings us by a lot of towers. And I do not see barricades on this side. Of this route to the city center. And there's towers to deal with on both sides. And I'm not seeing... Bar okay, there's a barricade option this way. So it uh, looks like we got to veer to the left uh, to get to the city center if we don't want barricade options uh, to, to stop us. In fact, there's the barricade on this side. Kind of a funky location. So I'll be right back. I'm going to get the army set up against this uh, attack point, and uh, then we'll get this thing going. All right, here we are set up, pretty normal formation. We got our, our longbowmen ready to move up. Uh, we got our battering ram right in the center. It's gonna be manned by our axe sergeants uh, to pound through that gate and then help us with melee battle right in the front and center. Uh, we do have uh, pike infantry on this wing. We do have some spear infantry on this wing to hold any reinforcements that may try coming up from the side. Uh, other than that, it's pretty normal setup and we're gonna get going here. Uh, let's start this battle. In fact, uh, we'll just have to make sure there's no catapults or anything because otherwise uh, we have the longbowmen on regular shot and they're going to move up first to try weakening the defenses on the walls. So let's get this battle started. In fact, there we go. There, The walls are highly held and we have catapults in the background that are not right on the wall at the moment so we will not worry about them at the moment and let's get moving up towards the walls and we will get our battering ram up to the gates as we attempt to take the contested walls. And how did they have reinforcements at, oh, that is the, the, the king himself, or that is the, the, their army themselves that are landing out here. That's what it was. They aren't all on the interior. Uh, so we have, we're gonna have some issues coming in. We'll see if they go in against the gates to reinforce in this way. I'm fine with that. I'm still gonna hold off uh, my reinforcements off here. We'll just kind of bring them over here right now. Keep them at sea, actually keep them away from the towers. But get them moving over. And we'll see if we can't get this wall assaulted. And 
most of our, our archers are being uh, are targeting over in this direction, which I'm happy about. And let's find out where they're going to run to, uh, because mostly we're looking at slight skirmishers. As a matter of fact, what the heck am I thinking? Let's get our cavalry over there as quick as we can, try to cut them off before they uh, get into the interior. What the heck am I thinking? I don't know that we're gonna get there in time now because I, I realized what the heck was going on a little bit too late. Oh, we lost a siege engine too. That's pretty crazy. Oh, the catapults are firing, that's why. But the, the forces on our walls uh, everywhere else are just falling apart from our longbowmen. Uh, so let's get the longbowmen working on this remaining catapult over here. And it looks like they all are getting inside the gates. So uh, we're going to move against anyone that's on the outside, the exterior. up to the gates and the defenses are almost gone except for what reinforcements they have so we got the charge going in against the crossbowmen whoa pardon the camera and uh, everybody else will get inside and this this unit was decimated let's get out of out of the range of the towers and uh, get ready for the main assault Okay, we're at the walls, we're coming in, we're gonna get our pikemen going. And set up as we can right here as quickly as possible. We need to come up behind here also to uh, help against the reinforcements. Everywhere else we're uncontested right now. get reset up out here with our cavalry ready to move in once we open the gates. And we're just going to charge in. We're going to keep the pike here to hold the line for any reinforcements. Keep the swords going out to thwart the reinforcements. And with the units on this side, we are uh, going to take down this tower if we can. And we're going to start our move towards the city center. Because all the units on this left side are free and ready to go. units on this side are not getting up here so let's get them moving it looks like the initial skirmishers we've taken out so we're gonna see if we can move through the market here actually we are gonna move against this tower that's pelting us right now and take that first Oh, this one burnt also. That's why they were not climbing it. I hadn't even noticed that. Okay, our spearmen have finally joined the fray. Fine, we'll we give them an easy target there of the catapults. We're going to jump up again to the next tower. towards the interior here. Okay, we have some more swordsmen in, able to move against these units. 
so they don't just pick off our pikemen. quite yet. 87%. Well, we've destroyed another enemy tower over here. Let's keep them moving against these forces out here. We're gonna move against these gates here to take out these towers. And pretty soon our gates should be down so we can bring in the cavalry uh, to take the city center. We're going to continue down here to go against their melee units uh, and we're going to take these gates and these last towers down here. And our gates down yet? 87%. Let's get going guys. Let's knock these gates down. having our way on the interior I just want to have our way with in fact why don't we now take out a spread formation since we aren't going to be taking fire anywhere yikes I'm going crazy with the camera start pelting the city center at a distance. Uh, it's time to start moving towards the city center. directly against this unit. And we've taken out that unit. Let's go against the crossbowmen now. Gates should be down, right? Our gates are down. Let's get the Axemen into the center. We just took a charge, and uh, let's get the rest of our cavalry up into the center. The enemy tower is no more than wreckage now. We're going to bring our spearmen up. And we'll leave these swordsmen to take care of these skirmishers. by the towers okay we've taken uh, their general down but we're taking some hurt ourselves in the process from these towers and that is it victory we've taken back Lisbon as we never should have lost it in my mind uh, but we now have it back
All right, so our losses were not excessive. In fact, both armies are no more, is what this is showing us. So uh, hopefully there is no more Portuguese army going to be hanging off our coast. Let's find out. We only lost 355. It seemed like it was worse than that. We are going to occupy and capture. Commander. And I do not see any Portuguese army. Let's go see if we get the answer that they're gone and no more. Rank gained Eric. So our general, uh, our young and new king. Oh, the way Eric's not our king. There it is. The faction is no match for their enemies. They are no more. So no more... No more fear of the Portuguese swooping on That's in yet again. So uh, both here, what do we have that we can use? Army integrity is in decent shape, although I'm going to use the cook to help with our army integrity. Oh, this is this is Eric. This is not our king who's up there. This is the one who replaced our king. That's who this Eric is. So there we go. Uh, he needs promotions. And let's see. Unit experience for recruits. No, we're going to go straight with authority. And we don't have any low categories here. So we're going to go straight with authority. And uh, we aren't going to need to recruit. But I want to get down to battle movement, battle speed upcoming as soon as possible. And we gained a battle movement speed for commander's unit and a household dog which we can assign somewhere else. We regained our resource of stone that we had and then lost. And the army itself has gained some some tradition. So let's see what we can do here. Missile attack rates uh, we're going to improve that because that has been vital to the success of us over here. And recruitment time now. Replenishment. We're going to go with replenishment on the last one over here. So there we go. Uh, we have it all taken over and uh, let's get this m army moving in fact we are going to uh, force row <laughs> to get over to northern Africa as soon as possible because we're gonna have this army sitting over here in fact they're gone already they've already moved hopefully going back to respond there but I don't want to take the chance that uh, when we take over that city next episode that they then change their mind and target Algiers so temporarily I'm gonna get an army on the move down there uh, to help us out and uh, let's see this is what's coming up next time ladies and gentlemen we're gonna have a tough battle this one uh, on the power meter is definitely not in our favor in fact we'll take a quick look to get us ready for next time it shows that uh, we will have an uphill battle for this one so i uh, hope you're able to join me next time to see if we can take this one on uh, we did quite an easy job to retake lisbon but we we expected that this one i'm still expecting victory but apparently uh trying to tell us it's going to be a rougher road to make that happen so let's see if we can get it done next time i do hope to see you next time this is zigzag zog signing off from somewhere in this world thanks so much for watching i really do appreciate it and by the way hit me that thumbs up for me really do appreciate it